Welcome back. This segment is entitled Diagnostic Criteria, Facial Height Proportion. Here is the facial height proportion. You measure the distance between the pupil and subnasality, and that vertical height should be two-fifths of the entire face height. The upper lip from subnasality to stomion should be one-fifth, and from stomion to soft tissue menton should be two-fifth. That is considered ideal facial height proportion. What we know is the most severe malocclusions are usually accompanied by long faces. And unfortunately, traditional orthotic treatment does nothing to shorten a long face and usually uh, slightly increases the length of the face. And we've been taught that significant reduction in face height in adolescents or adults can only be corrected surgically. In reality, orthotropic treatment prior to age 10 can prevent unwanted lengthening of the face and eliminate the need for surgery later. We can also decrease the lower face height as we're going to show you in a moment. Let's first of all apply this to an individual. And here's a child with a very long face. And let's look at him. He's had surgery to get from the above pictures to the, the pictures below. And you can see what his teeth looked like in the beginning. And here they are after the treatment. Uh, he had very poor rest oral posture, hung his mouth open all the time, which allowed the maxilla to narrow like you see and for his entire face to fall down and back. So he had a surgical correction to reduce the lower face height. You can see what was done for him. Here we see somebody else that everybody is familiar with. This is actually Michael Phelps. Here he is with his mother being bottle fed, which is the exact wrong thing to do. Here he is when he's a little bit older. And here he is when he's uh, a young, young child uh, on the edge of a swimming pool with his mouth hanging open. And a few years later, his face his height has increased to this dimension. And by the time he wins his first gold medal in the Olympics in Beijing, his face height is very long. Here he is by the time he goes to win his Olympic medals in London, and you can see his incredibly long face. Here he is from the side. Here he is in Rio de Janeiro getting his medals. That's the best profile picture I could get. But you can see how dramatically long his face is. And you see most pictures of him, his mouth is hanging open all the time. Contrast that to somebody who clenches their teeth together for much of the day. And you can actually see that the face height can be reduced. And here's such a woman, and her chin has come forward over the years uh, because of the clenching, and her face height is reduced because of that. She is the exact opposite of Michael Phelps, who hung his mouth open. Here you see her. She also has a headache pattern, but you can see how her upper incisors are basically have been disappeared up underneath her upper lip because of her clenching and moving the maxilla upward. The exact opposite of Michael Phelps. <clears throat> Here's another person in my practice that I saw many years ago. The picture on the left was taken approximately seven years before the one on the right. And she was an intense clencher and her face height, height changed that much with a rotation forward of her, of her entire lower face. She was not growing in the left. This was an entirely something that occurred while she was an adult but the face change is dramatic. <clears throat> her face height is getting shorter and shorter and her chin is tending to come forward. Out of a popular movie from many years ago, you see Paris Hilton here and someone else in the movie called The Hottie and the Naughty. You see a short face, shorter face individual with Paris Hilton and the longer face individual with this other person. <clears throat> you can see the contrast between the two. So it's been said that you, in our profession, that the lower face height cannot be reduced except by surgery. So let's show you a surgical case, how that's done. And here's a girl who's had traditional orthotics with four bicuspids removed, and not uh, surprisingly, a huge increase in the open bite and in her face height. Uh, it really was a very unsuccessful treatment, as usually it is. <laughs> and Typically what's going to happen when, when this happens is the orthodontist is going to say, we'll never get your teeth to fit if you don't keep your, your tongue out of there. In reality, it's not about the maxillary anterior teeth falling down too much. It's about the molars over erupting and causing the mandible to rotate open and increase the lower face height. Those upper anterior teeth are way too far down. They don't need to come down further. They show this massive amount of uh, gum tissue, which is not aesthetic. Surgically, you can change this. And that's what's been done here. And this is what she looks like one year post-surgery. But let's look at her face from the side. Uh, double jaw surgery required. Maxilla brought forward. Uh, the posterior aspect brought down. And a counterclockwise rotation of the occlusal plane. And you can get that kind of a nice correction in the facial balance. 
and from the front you can see the gummy smile disappears as the maxilla is properly positioned upward upward remember that upward and forward in the face in the in the long face individual now let's look at a child and can we reduce her face height look at her face height how much dramatically increased the lower face height is this is a very long lower face and her flattened chin shows us that she's a chronic mouth breather with a lot of muscle strain necessary to get her lips together she basically has her mouth hanging open all the time with orthotropics we're able to change that and develop the entire maxilla forward and decrease the face height in the process through a very interesting technique which we teach in our orthotropic mini residency if you want to look at it from the side you can go from the left pre-treatment to the right you can see how a dramatically increased face height can be decreased without any type of surgery whatsoever but we have to be treating the patient under age 10 to make this happen so there you have it diagnostic criteria facial height proportion and the long face patients present much more frequently for treatment for airway issues the point is we'd like to not have anybody develop the long face and that's what orthotropics is all about trying to do